With spring in swing and the approach of summer, the days are getting longer and nicer, yet I still find myself missing out on my time in the sun. I think part of the problem is clocks. When I look at a clock and see that it's 5 p.m., I feel like there's so much more time in the day. In some sense, there is. I have hours before I'll be heading to bed, in which I can get things done. So I stay inside, watch TV, play a game, and suddenly, before I realize it, the sun has set. I decided that to deal with this problem, I would create a new clock for myself. Not one tied to the seconds and minutes of a regular timekeeper, but instead of showing how much longer the sun would be out. I call this device the light link. The idea for the light link started one night last week, after what I saw was a particularly beautiful day from inside, looking through my window. I remember thinking that I should go outside for a walk, looking at the time, and deciding that I could get a bit more done before heading out. Then, after what felt like not very much time at all, I looked up again to realize that the sun had set and I had missed my chance. After getting over my disappointment, I started working on my device. My first dilemma was figuring out how to calculate what time sunrise and sunset would be every day. I tried setting a fixed timer that would start when a button was pressed and count down throughout the day. This kind of worked, but with the days getting longer, the timer drifted and I am not what you might call a morning person. So getting up to hit the button every day didn't last very long. My next idea was to use a light sensor. It would track how bright it was outside and use the information to figure out how far into the day it was. This did not really work at all. Days are different brightnesses and these rare weather phenomena called clouds would throw off the readings. After thinking about it for a while, I realized the answer was where it almost always is, the internet. After searching around, I found exactly what I was looking for from sunrisesunset.io. This site allows you to find the sunrise and sunset of any location. And importantly for my application, they provide an easy to use and free API. An API, or application program interface, is sort of like a website specifically to send information from one computer to another. You request information by using a very specific URL, like the one you see now, and instead of sending back a whole web page of beautiful styling and pretty pictures, you get just the plain text of information that you're looking for. This method of getting information is not very easy or fun for humans, but it's exactly the kind of thing computers are best at. With sourcing the information figured out, the next thing to do was to get something working that can read the information and do something with it. In this case, that thing is an ESP32 microcontroller. The ESP32 is basically a tiny computer, also called a microcontroller, that we write code for to take in and put out electrical signals on different pins on a circuit board. Microcontrollers are great for doing simple to complex operations that need physical input like buttons and outputs like lights. The ESP32 has an extra superpower. In addition to being able to read and write to and from its pins, it can also connect the internet to send and receive information. With just a little bit of code, I was able to get the ESP32 to send a request to Sunrise Sunset API and get back the information needed. Once the information was received, it can be parsed to figure out when sunrise is and how long the day is. This information, as well as information about the current time, which the ESP also pulls from the internet, lets us calculate what percentage daylight is left for the day. With that done, the next thing was to take care of the easy part of displaying that information. Little did he know that this supposed easy part would take him to the brink of madness. The brink of what now? I had a couple of ideas for how I wanted to make the display work. The issue was trying to find something that was between scrying a crystal ball. Yes, I can see it now. The sun will set when the first bell tolls. And too perfectly scientific. Yes, well, according to my calculations, the sun will set when the first bell tolls. I attempted a few things. The first was an LED that would dim throughout the day. I realized pretty quickly, though, that what I had created was a high-tech weather rock, as it essentially did a lot of work to show me what I could already see outside. This also fell pretty firmly into the take your best guess category of conveying information. My next idea was to use a tiny LCD screen to show a full countdown till sunset. This worked better and at least showed some useful information, but was too perfect and not really readable at a glance. What is this? A screen for ants! This would not work for what I wanted either, so finally I reached for the Mac 7291 matrix display. This was perfect for what I wanted, and the idea was simple. The display would be fully illuminated at sunrise, and as the day went on, would tick down. While the idea was simple, as it turned out, implementing it was not nearly as easy as I thought it would be. This is the brink of madness part. 
The basis for my hubris was that I have used these displays before. There are lots of helpful Arduino libraries that make controlling it ridiculously easy. The problem is that for this project, I was not using the regular Arduino libraries, or for that matter, even the regular programming language for Arduino, C++. I decided I had to be too cool for all that, and wrote the code for this project in a programming language called Rust. If you're interested in how I got set up in programming the ESP32 in Rust, I'm planning to make a video on my second channel, Make It For Less Learning, so you can head over there and subscribe so you don't miss it. If you're in a subscribing mood, liking this video and subscribing is super appreciated and helps a lot. Now, back to my descent into madness. Ah! Without the Arduino libraries to fall back on, I had to implement the control for the display myself. I tried using some examples from Rust libraries I found online and reading the hieroglyphics of the Max 7219 datasheet. Finally, when all hope seemed lost, I found my salvation. A truly wonderful person named Omar Halari posted this article online that was almost exactly what I needed. I was able to follow along with his awesome tutorial and get my display up and running. It's working, it's working, oh yeah, it's working, oh, 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 oh yeah. I had to make a few changes to work with the four display module I had instead of the single display from the tutorial, but that was pretty straightforward. And with that, the display was working exactly as I had imagined it. With the display sorted and the ability to get the needed information, the last step of the process was getting them to work together. Mmm, chocolate. Mmm, -hmm. peanut butter. Hey, you got your chocolate on my peanut butter. You got butter. peanut butter on my chocolate. What? what? Luckily, this part of the process ended up being the easiest thing I had to do. Since I had already figured out how to parse the information from the API, and figured out how to show whatever I wanted on screen, it was just a matter of how to translate that information into the display. My final solution was to take the current time, subtract the time of sunrise, and then divide that by the length of the day and subtract that from 1. This would tell me as a percent how much daylight of the day was left. The display has 32 vertical rows, so all I had to do was multiply 32 by the number I got, and that tells me how many rows to light up. And after working out a few more bugs that caused only minor hair loss. Leave me alone! Ah! Akira! Ah! It was done. It now sits on my desk and reminds me that the sun is not out forever, and if it's a beautiful day, I really should go outside. Speaking of which, I'm going to get some time outside while I still can on this beautiful day. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, a like and subscribe really helps support this channel. Speaking of support, if you really incredibly enjoyed this video and want to support me further, Patreon is currently the best place to do it. I also want to thank Kim. Pam, Christian, Joshua, Marcelino, and Ryan for their incredible support. That's all I've got this time. I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you next time here on Make It For Less.